Welcome to another Friday edition of our Facebook Live here at Hot Shot Secret. Kyle Fisher here with Kevin Adams. Kevin Adams makes another return. I've been gone a couple weeks. You were gone last yeah, week. Yeah, gone last week. We had a on scene out at UCC last week on a, for our live video, and got to admit, I just sat down. So we're kind of winging this one. Yes, we are. But we got a good plan, thanks to marketing. So uh, on today's video, like we said, always like and share the video. Uh, sign up for notifications when we go live, which is every Friday at 3 p.m. And on today's video, this will be a little different video, it says. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. We got a Q&A with Kevin. Yes, I'm going to call this Stump the Tribologist. <laughs> So our goal is to is to put Kevin in a tight spot and make him answer tough questions. So, um, as always, post your questions below, regardless of what they are. Um, we're gonna we're gonna tackle them. Some of the topics we're gonna hit today are breaking the myth. So, if doing regular maintenance, an engine and fuel system cleanout is not necessary. Mm -hmm. That's a myth. That is a myth. Let's break it. All right, we'll do that. All right, we're also gonna talk about. Our sticks and eliminator and our diesel extreme, which is the first part of our, you know, our two-step system there, cleaning out the oil and fuel side, and why an annual oil and fuel system cleaning is necessary. It's kind of like another one of those myths is not necessary annually, mm -hmm. but we're going to break that. Mm -hmm. You sure? <laughs> sure I, I'm counting on you. And of course, free product giveaway. It's it's uh, free product Friday, so we're going to. And I think I I heard in here it's Kevin's choice what we're giving away. You want you want to tease people now? What is the choice? You know what I was thinking? You know what we've never given away before? What's that? Oh, oil analysis kit? Yeah. <clears throat> or should we do t-shirts? Let's give them a choice between diesel extreme and oil analysis. Okay. Today's winners for face free, free product Friday is either going to get some diesel extreme or an oil, oil analysis kit. Yeah, let's do a 32. 32. There you go. <laughs> so uh, we, we really try to encourage people to really do oil analysis and maybe this way we're going to force them to do it and they'll see yeah. how it works and everything. So. Yeah. So make sure you post below. Uh, stay tuned to see if you'll be picked. Uh, what's the web special this week there, Kev? Oh, it looks like we have double points. So every dollar that you spend earns two points. So uh, 20 points is equal to a dollar off future order. So, so, so basically you spend 100, you get $10 off. Double points? On your next purchase. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. How long is that active, Levi? About two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Double weeks, double points. So good time to get your orders in on the web there. Uh, stack up those points so you can cash them in. And we got two articles this week. You can find them on, on our website as well as our Facebook page. Uh, the first one is a, is a great one, the FR3. No other additive like it. We explain the science behind it and why it matters to you. It's, uh, I believe uh, Eric wrote that one, right? Correct. Yeah, Eric Trimble on our marketing farm did a good job. It's a good, good review on our FR3. It kind of gives you a little background. It's in our current... LSI Magazine, which is also available on our website, uh, so go check that out. And we have another article about Josh Scruggs, mm -hmm. uh, who's the new owner mm -hmm. of LaVon Miller's famous uh, pro street truck, the three-time defending uh, UCC champion. I shouldn't say defending anymore, because that's now over as of this past weekend. But Josh Scruggs went out there this past weekend in the new truck, new setup, uh, industrial injection build, uh, motor, um, hot shot secret fluids all throughout it. Uh, did really well. I guess we'll touch on that in a, in a little bit. But we got a great article up there about Josh Gruggs, um, some good, a good interview with him as well as LaVon. Uh, so go read that. It's a good read. And uh, we're, 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 we're looking forward to working with Josh a lot more here in the future. So subscribe to our email newsletter to get exclusive deals and updates. Check out our digital magazine. Again, the LSI magazine is available on our website. And if you, if you sign up for the newsletters, they get emailed the magazine, right, Levi? Yeah. Yes, they do. All right. So let's see what's coming up on TV. Oh, so TV today, following this show at 4 p.m. on MAV TV is an episode of Performance TV with myself and LaVon Miller. Uh, we had a kind of a two-part deal. Half the, half the show is... Uh, kind of relationship between Hot Shots and Firepunk and what they do down there at Firepunk and what we do here at Hot Shots and uh, it just premiered on, on uh, what was it on? <laughs> I know it's Map TV today but I, I forget what, where it premiered. Where did it premiere at? Motor Trend. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. so it already premiered yes. on Motor Trend but now this is the premiere for Map TV. <laughs> yeah. uh, Lucas Oil's Map TV. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be showing a lot of our <laughs> Hot Shots technology over there. So that's on at 4 o'clock. So as soon as we get done here, tune over there and watch that episode. And then again on Tuesday, uh, that same episode of Firepunk and Hot Shots will be on Revan at 7 p.m. Tuesday night. So a couple chances to catch it, one being right after the show here. So tune over to that. What's going on in the event world recently? Well, we just, just finished up Rudy's in North Carolina, Ultima College Challenge in Indiana. Um, the big news there is at both events, uh, Larson broke the record, the world record. That's right. That's right. So, so it was quite a battle. They, I believe coming off of the last one, they were at 4.47. Mm. And then Ryan Milliken went out there and just crushed it yeah. and got it down to 4.28. So the battle was on for Firepunk to get the record back. And down at the Rudy's opener, shout out to Greg Jolly, all the people at Rudy's. The season opener for Outlaw Diesel was awesome. I mean, the crowd was packed. I yeah. mean, it was uh, rain kind of uh, hit the first day, but you know, um, great event. And the Firepunk guys went out there and they did it again. They, they put down a 4.27 to take back the record by one one hundredth of a second. So this is gonna be a fun year. Yeah, I mean, these guys are really pushing. I mean, who would have thought a diesel truck would be going that fast? And yeah. now there's a couple of them out there, you know, competing. So so it's it's it, it was a great weekend to open up the Outlaw uh, Diesel Series. And then that followed up by Ultimate Callout ch Challenge this past weekend, so back-to-back -back huge events. And as you said, uh, Outlaw Diesel had a little promotional kind of a, a, a quick eight inside the UCC event and the Firepunk S10 went out there and stretched their record even further, ran a 4.25. Amazing. It's really impressive. And yeah. it's a good time to note that, as a lot of you probably know, it's the Save the Racks truck here at Hot Shot Secret. We support the Save the Racks campaign uh, with Emily Moeller and, and Edgar's truck and, and the whole uh, Save the Racks campaign raising awareness of breast cancer research. So once again this year, we're donating $50 every time you see that Save the Racks truck go down the track. And what we're doing as a unique twist this year with the challenge that these guys are facing, chasing these world records, every time the, the S10 uh, extends that record by five one hundredths of a second, we're throwing an extra hundred bucks into the pot. So they've already gone, they broke 445, 440, 435, 430, now they're at 425. And I keep getting little funny text messages from Edgar saying, there's threes in the mix. And I'm just like, man, I can't even imagine getting down to threes. But um, shout out to Drew at D&J Precision. Yeah. That billet block looks amazing. And uh, I think uh, maybe when that block gets in that that truck, they got a shot at it. Yeah. But I'm certainly sure they're not done. I don't mm -hmm. think 425 is going to be the last. I don't think Ryan Milliken's done either. No, I definitely. think he's going get, to get down there too. So. Yeah. Um, just congratulations to all of them. I mean, it takes such an effort what those guys are doing for the whole team and, and everything. Uh, on top of that, and the other button up from UCC, uh, a lot of rain. Uh, we had a nice lake in front of the booth. But thanks for all our customers that came out to see us there. Um, we sold a lot of product, gave a lot of samples out. We had a lot of people stop by and say they watched this program. Yeah, <laughs> some fans. We, we, yeah, <laughs> Kevin's a legend. He didn't even know it. We often wonder if anybody's even on that side of the camera, so it was cool to have a bunch of people come by and say that they've been enjoying our nerdy oil talks, and so we're happy to educate people out there. So it's good to see a lot of our customers. Uh, as I said, Josh Gruggs had uh, a, a great weekend where, you know, uh, as we're still sponsoring that truck, as Josh Gruggs now has it, and I think he had, after day one, I think he placed, I think it was fifth in the... Uh, in the drag, and then as many people have seen online, uh, he had a, uh, a motor blow on the dyno, which was pretty epic. Um, I know a lot of people seen the video, but we've got extra video that's coming. Uh, I think I had three GoPros on that, including one inside the cab, and it is pretty, wait till you see it. It's gonna be pretty cool. Like, the, the, these flames shooting throughout the inside of the cab, and it, it was Bob Milliken from uh, Industrial Injection was behind the wheel. That crazy dude was reaching back in through the flames trying to shut off all the switches because the nitrous was still stuck open mm -hmm. and it was popping. So we'll have that footage up here soon uh, to check out. I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, uh, Power Stroke Ingenuities. Um, they're a new dealer of ours and 
Um, I believe they started with us just a few months ago after the uh, Florida event. And it, this is the black fast truck, uh, the, the matte black with the gold uh, wheels and, and block and, 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 and fast logo on the side that you've all probably seen. It is, it's, it's Ford Ranger. It's a really cool nice build. And, uh, and, and we're really happy that their new dealers on board with us. And out there at the track, they decided to swap oils right there um, at the middle of a yeah. UCC event. So yeah. I think they got video of it or whatnot, but they dumped all their fluids, loaded that truck up with hot shot stuff. And I know they already saw some real good gains on the transmission yeah. cooling yeah. and everything. Yeah. So yeah. they're real happy. We're, we're real happy. So shout out to uh, all you guys over at Power Stroke Ingenuities. Um, great weekend for you guys as well. And uh, uh, Rudy's. Rudy's uh, brought the all wheel drive truck out. Yeah. Um, they placed first. They, they won the drag racing competition. So, congrats to Nathaniel DeLong, uh, Rawlings, and, and everybody down there at, at Rudy's. It was, we're, you know, we're happy to be aboard with all our fluids in, in the Rudy's trucks now. They really kicked butt. I didn't get to see them at the end. I think they headed out, but I know they uh, they uh, didn't get to the the pole. But you know, winning first place in any one of those events is, is pretty good. So, congrats, congrats to them. Who am I forgetting? It was a been some crazy couple mm -hmm. weekends in a row main highlights that's the main highlights <laughs> yeah but and, and congrats well and, and Derek Rose yeah, yeah. I mean Derek Rose at DNR I mean yeah. that guy deserves he, he's a UCC champion I mean I think he's second place a couple of years in a row now so no one deserved it more than Derek Rose yeah, and definitely. so con congrats to Derek uh, DNR uh, they're, they're a dealer of ours you can pick up your hot shots products from them as well so uh, we're just congrats to everybody it's always a big way to kick off the season the diesel motorsports industry is kind of interesting with some of the biggest events start the season. So it really kicks it off with a bang and then and then now we're off and running. So what's up next year? Well, that leads us into what I've been saying for many weeks now. Now the next event is the Firepunk Outlaw Diesel Revenge. The Firepunk Outlaw Diesel Revenge. May 31st, June 1st here in Ohio. We're really excited about it. Uh, you should check out the video LeVon just put out. It kind of he kind of let the cat out of the bag. A lot of the cool stuff that's coming out that I haven't been able to tell you yet, but now it's kind of out there. The Saturday night finale is fueled by Hot Shot Secret. They've got the, uh, the presenting of the colors by the military. There's a C-17 flyover. They've got two jet cars out there. Blastro, which is this jet van, is out there. Uh, uh, Lutz and a, and a couple guys are going to do some promotional passes. So. I mean, these guys, and we got our Central Ohio Power Wheels are going to be out there as well. So the kids are going to be out in these badass little Power Wheels that pull their wheels up, and um, it is, it's going to be uh, something new for the Outlaw Diesel Super Series. So I'm really impressed with how Firepunk has done this and their first year in. I'm looking forward to all of you coming to Ohio. We look forward to welcoming you here. So make sure you make it out May 31st, June 1st, and that's at Enzinia at Kilcare Wait Raceway. So I think that's most of our housekeeping. Anything else that's going on here in Hot Shots land? Oh, almost forgot. <laughs> so many of you might have heard, it kind of leaked out of the bag, but now we can officially announce it. We've been sponsoring Trey Sykes for a number of years now. Um, he's the one that drives the BMW 335D Hot Shots wrapped. Uh, heck of a driver, you, you, you know, I mean, probably one of the best bracket racers I know. And yeah. and uh, uh, it's fun to watch that little Beamer go out there and kick butt with all these big old diesel trucks. Well, we've made an agreement with Trey, and uh, Trey is now a new dealer of ours. So if any of you are looking for products, you know Trey will always have some in his trunk. So you yeah. find him, he's, he's going to be able to get you uh, anything you need from Hot Shots. But more importantly, we now have a house race car. Mm -hmm. We've, we've purchased the Hot Shots BMW from Trey Sykes, so it's now here. I think Levi's probably got a shot of it. It's right behind us right now. So it is a, uh, it's here, it's, it's for us. And we're going to, um, any of our dealers out there, our account executives might come visit you in it. It's still gonna be in a promotional booth. And the cool thing for Trey, he's still gonna race the whole series in, in that car. Yeah. So. Uh, it's a win-win. It's a win-win. <laughs> and I know what Kevin's excited about. He gets R&D with that thing. <laughs> So I mean, we're we're gonna take it through its paces with R and D as well. It's it's yeah. we we're fortunate to be so close with Firepunk that we get to experiment with them a lot. Uh, but now we have an in-house high-performance diesel. I think it thing's 750 torque at the you know at the wheel. So 
Uh, but it also is a BMW inside. It's a nice driver too. So, um, so we're really excited about that. Congrats to Trey. Um, congrats to us for getting a race car that's also a daily driver car that helps the company out mm -hmm. and promotional vehicle, all that. So uh, we're really excited about that. You'll see. So you're going to see a lot more of that car here here in the near future, and uh, we're going to get that out there for everybody to see. And it will be out at uh, Firepunk Diesel Revenge. It'll be in the booth. Be in the booth and sneak out and race too, and sneak back in. I didn't say that because we're not allowed to do that, but it might do that. <laughs> so let's get into today's uh, questions, comments, concerns. Looks like we got some. Let's knock out our our uh, our viewer questions first. USM, USMC Racing, what is up, guys? Yes. Uh, Ryan Giesford had a customer ask me if there is any plan for barriers for next year. Uh, we, we we have a, a, a company. I think you stumped. Y yeah. <laughs> Let me just Congratulations, <laughs> Ryan. You took one question. We stumped them. Yeah. Uh, bottom line is we will be coming out with that next year. Uh, we've come across some unique chemistry, uh, and we think that if we put the FR3 in with this unique chemistry, we found a, a, a blender. Grease is one of those things where you need to have a kettle, and there's a special way of, of making grease, uh, but we we found somebody that will do small batches, so we can we can do some R and D with them, and you know, you know get some feedback. So, bottom line is that that tentatively is on the schedule for next year. Okay. So, I know we've uh, uh, we we almost got there, and then we kind of gets pushing it down. I remember I think it was the year before last when we were out in Vegas for SEMA. And I remember Chris at an after party at a bar was talking to another guy from a grease company, and it was like, did we just become best friends? Yeah. And these guys <laughs> talked grease for like five hours. It's like, so it will come. It, I mean, I know it's one, something that Chris wants and everything. So looks like a next year thing, but thanks for the question, Ryan. Yeah. USMC Racing. Man, you missed a badass weekend, man. Sixth in our class of over 40 and 14th out of almost 100 cars. Yeah. That's Brian Check there with USMC Racing we sponsor. Congratulations, Brian! I saw I saw that. That is an impressive outing, and um, they. Uh, uh, I, I was still watching some of their uh, uh, previous stuff. If, you, if anybody missed the welding job they did on their exhaust like a couple weeks ago, it's really cool. I mean, believe it, I might be able to find a find a, a picture of it. But but yeah, they keep doing well. Uh, if you guys if, if you guys don't know about it, go to USMC Racing. You can probably click on his little link right there on, on his name. Um, they're a great group of guys that do this 24-hour uh, of lemons. We'd love to support them. So go out there and support them. I know they have, um, Brian just sent me a message earlier today. They got invited to a military parade. Um, I can't remember where it is. Maybe he'll mention it uh, next weekend. So uh, we'll find it and post it. But if you're near there, go down there and check it out. It's a great military parade. Uh, and uh, the USMC Racing is going to be represented into it. So congratulations for that, guys. Trey Sykes watching. Hey, Trey. There's okay. Carmen. Hey, Carmen. Bearded Medic. Hoo-hoo. Glad I ordered <laughs> yesterday. Oh, man. Maybe we could squeeze you some bonus points. Dalton DeLoza. I have it I have it all, and my 5.9 Cummins loves it. Awesome job, boys. Well, thanks, Dalton. We appreciate it. Troy Kennedy. Stump questions. Ooh, ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> What is the highest contaminant in an oil analysis of semi-synthetic oil in the four-cylinder gasoline aviation engines? <laughs> Good one. So, so uh, what is the highest contamination in oil analysis of semi-synthetic oil in the four-cylinder gasoline aviation engines? Come on, Cap. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> That's an excellent question. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually... Uh, I'm Don't not really sure. You stumped them. Yeah. Good question. Uh, I mean, I will say, though, the good thing about oil analysis is, you know, when you get an analysis back, you see, you know, wear metals. Uh, you have the wear metal section, you have the section that comes from additives, and then you have the, the multi-source. So, so in that application, you, you know, say you get some copper or some iron, you, you know, that, that's what gives you an indication that, Hey, it could be coming from a couple different places in the right. engine, but yeah, I don't know the answer to that. He doesn't. <laughs> Good one, though. Worthy, though. Yeah. Nick Frames there. Hey, Nick, how you doing? We saw Nick out at uh, UCC. 
Um, Hot Shot Secret 4.25. Is that Levi's post? Bearded Medic, how much FR3 should I put in my power steering pump? I'm going to change fluid as soon as my order comes in. I'll take this one. 5%. <laughs> Thought I was going to say. Yeah, we usually recommend it regardless of the application, I think. I haven't yeah. heard of an application. Actually, somebody asked me this question earlier today. I don't really know of an application yet that we don't recommend a 5% dosage mm -hmm. of capacity. Yeah. So uh, your power steering pump's usually pretty small to capacity, and so it's almost like a thimble sometimes. But you want to keep it about 5%. I think we recommend the same thing for diffs. Yep, if you put in your gears, if you put an FR3 in the gears, you want to figure out your total capacity, and about 5% of it should be FR3. So there you go, Bearded Medic. Evan Tracy, what gear oil should I use on the steer hubs of my semi? Hmm. <laughs> Rough to a bad start. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> Dump them. Yeah, off the top of my, the biggest thing in gear oil is maintaining the film strength that the manufacturer recommends. So. So the biggest thing is choosing the right viscosity. So, you know, for example, we have a 90 weight, we have a 110, and we have a 140. You know, depending on the application, um, you know, if the manufacturer recommends a 140, our gear oils, either the Blue Diamond or the Adrenaline gear oil, it has a lot of zinc, it has a lot of extreme pressure additives, and it's a PAO base, which res resists oxidation. So uh, we could do some research and find out the viscosity of that application, but as a general rule of thumb, the viscosity is one of the main, you, you main things you want to keep consistent with what the manufacturer recommends. Now, if, uh, if 90, 110, 140 hits most recommendation. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> and it is the type of thing that you can blend if you need, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I was, re I was just reading somewhere where somebody wanted something in between a 110 and 140, and they said it's, it's, it's simple to blend. James Bruce, what's up, buddy? Did you help put out the fire from that hot hooker? No. No. If anybody knows what he's talking about, the uh, um, uh, the, the dirty, hooker. dirty hooker diesel caught on fire on the dyno at UCC. It was epic. And the, the motor ran away, and it was a big fire. Um, uh, dirty hookers are de a dealer of ours as well, so you guys can get your products from them as well. And... To their credit, I'll tell you what, I'm sure you guys have all seen it on, on, on the web, of the pictures of it, of it catching fire. What's a lot of people didn't get the end of that story is that they pulled the next day. Mm. I mean, it looked like a full burn down. It was a full burn down. They worked all night. They had a motor, their old motor out there for sale, I think, at UCC. Well, they took that for sale <laughs> sign off, grabbed that motor, threw it in the truck, mm. had it ready the next day, and competed in the final day at UCC. Yeah. So shout out to Dirty Hooker Diesel. I mean, that is, that is devotion. That is impressive. Yeah. And for, for as big as that fire was, it was pretty scary. And uh, I'm glad nobody got hurt. Nobody was injured. Um, but kudos to them for being able to get that truck back together and compete yeah. the next day. That tells you how, how cool that event is, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, these guys yeah. go all out for it. So, so it was really cool. Troy Kennedy says lead. I think that might be a follow-up to his... Oh, that's, answer, that's the highest contaminant, uh, lead. Hmm. Get up on your aviation and oil analysis. <laughs> that's it, Troy. Troy, I think you just want a free product. Definitely. <laughs> so, Beard and Mike's got a question. We got a tractor supply and an O'Reilly's and Menards here in Traverse City, Michigan. How come they do not sell oil? Why just the additives? Well, I'll tell you. The, uh, in short, we don't make very much money off our oil. We have very low margin on our oil. And the reason being is we are formulating some really high-end oil. The reason why our oils are so much better than what's out there in the market is because most places are in it to make money. <laughs> and they're going to put as much of the nice packages in their oil to get it up to a point where they can then sell it. And it's a, it's a price game, and we get that. That's not a market we ever really intended on in getting in from the start anyways. Mm -hmm. But through many reasons, we got into it. So we are making those oils available to those of you out there that want to have the best of the best of the best of the best. In doing so, in order for us to make it a really profitable item for us, it, we'd have to price it out so high that nobody can really afford it. So we made the decision, okay, we're gonna go ahead and formulate these products. We're gonna put them out there. 
at a price somebody can at least afford to, to get in their car, but it's right where we, it costs us to make. Yeah. And in the retail world, they, they, they need margins. And we just don't have the margin to give retailers you know, a, enough discounts to be able to put on the shelf. So I don't think you're ever gonna see our oils in the retailer. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our dealers carry it. Yeah, it's a good thing for the dealers. It's a great thing for the dealers. Our dealers yeah. in on, they're they're available through our website. Uh, you know, we got free shipping on that type of stuff, so you can always go to our website. You can get double points right now too, right, Levi? Correct. Good time to get your oil online. Get double points, and uh, if you go to our website, you can always check our uh, uh, find a store and locate a local dealer. Um, all of our dealers have access to our oils. We we a lot of our dealers sell a lot of it actually. Uh, um, Justin just, or he's on his way up. Uh, he was just at Fire Punk in his uh, truck tuned, mm -hmm. and he called and said, I'm heading up back up through Ohio. Can I pick up another drum of oil? So we got a drum out here sitting waiting, waiting for Justin. Uh, so a lot of our dealers sell it. Uh, Justin actually uses his house oil. Mm -hmm. So if you get your oil changed up there, it's, you're going to get yeah. some green diamond in it. So maybe look at the, the dealer map, support a local, local dealer. If your local dealer doesn't carry oil, tell them to. Mm -hmm. You know, let them know that, that, you, that you got a demand for it and, and they can pick it up. So it's just never really going to be a retail product. No, definitely not. And do we have some more oils coming maybe? Is it time to make a little announcement about it's that? It's a little early. It's a little early. <laughs> well, we, we can't say that we're, 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 at, we're adding one more viscosity to our synthetic line. Oh, we are? Yeah, in the past we've just had a, a 540 and we're adding a 1540 to the synthetic. Great. So. Great, that'll make a lot of people happy. Yeah, that's on the short list. That should be out in a couple weeks. Couple weeks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two weeks, Levi. Start the clock. So, James Bruce, how is Chris's daughter's car doing? Great from what I know. Chris isn't in yeah. today, uh, but he, as, as a lot of people out there know, they put the 08 oil mm -hmm. in. And he sent her off to college without letting her know. Yeah, she'll be back in a week or two, and we'll take another oil analysis. But she hasn't been really using oil. She hasn't been using oil. Initially, out of the gate, we burned a little oil. Yeah, we did. And then it ceased mm -hmm. after that. And um, we did an oil analysis, right? It came back good? Yeah. And she hasn't called home screaming that something's wrong with her car? No. So, so far, so good. So, James, I guess we'll have an update for you in a couple of weeks when she yeah. gets back from school. We'll probably pull another oil analysis, see where it's doing. But... So far, so good. Uh, uh, wait, what is that? Uh, what year is that? I'm not sure. Oh, well, it's like an early 2000s or something. Yeah, right? that's what I guess. Early 2000s Ford Escape with uh, zero W8 oil for months now and uh, doing well. So that test will continue and we'll keep you updated. Thanks for asking, James. Yeah. Troy Kennedy says, donate that product value. Thanks anyway. I missed that. Oh, don't eat the product value. He's probably said I'm gonna give him some free stuff. Ah, uh, Troy, you, I've got something for you, buddy. James Bruce on that water oil. <laughs> yeah, it pretty much is water oil. Dan Zelton says my customers love the oils. Yeah, Dan's one of our dealers. Uh, so if if you're out his way, he can get you some oil for sure. Um, a lot of our dealers start with FR3 and they start infusing their house oil and yeah. then. All of a sudden, they go over to gallons, and like I said, Justin Ziegler of Ziegler Diesel Performance, he's now just buying it by the drum because his customers love it so much. So yeah, he he started putting it in his, his customers' cars and, or trucks without them really knowing, kind of <laughs> as a test, and that's uh, you know that's where he was convinced that yeah. There was something when you have a blind test, something, something comes there. back like I just got an oil <laughs> change and my car's running better than ever. Like, what did you do to it? You know, so yeah. Um, pretty soon they stop. Uh, Stop using what they're using and move on to our stuff. So we're happy about that. <laughs> Beard Medic says, then hire me to sell all your stuff. Northern Michigan distributor. <laughs> yeah, I just ordered oil, FR3, EDT, and gasoline extreme. I don't buy, I don't mind buying direct. Service is great. Well, great to hear, Bearded. We know you're a big <laughs> fan. We appreciate it. Uh, we're, still like, we're still going with questions, so. Tyler Campfield, I have a slight ticking sound in my Dodge Charger with a 3.5 liter. Anything I can put in to fix that? I know Tyler. Um, so the 3.5 liter is the Gen 1. It's not the 3.6 is the newer one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, we talk about the Hemi tick. The 3.5, I'm told, is something different. But do you have any word on that? Even Hemi tick, there's a lot of conflicting opinions on what the root cause of that is. That's why, you know, we're... we're 
when, when we come across a car that seems like it's a good one to test, we're trying to get some data on that. Um, I, I think that, that vehicle still has hydraulic lifters. Mm, Three five so. probably. So so what what we think is happening? You know, hydraulic lifters have a really small hole to to firm up the lifter, and we think sludge is getting in there, and the uh, the tap is coming from the uh, from the adjustment getting off. And when the engine's cleaned out, uh, you know that's uh, the, the timing is is put back into place. So. Uh, that's an interesting enough uh, opportunity there. We would be willing to give him some product to test. Well, and we back. did start some Hemi tick testing. Yeah. Unfortunately, we did it like right at the beginning of winter. Yeah. And all of my Hemi Diva friends didn't want to take their cars out of the garage. Uh, we did have one good friend come by and, and do a test, and we, we got a slight gain in, in reducing the audible level of it. But with the weather out better now, we're going to pick up the Hemi testing again, I believe. Um, and I know Tyler. I think Tyler's up in the Cleveland area. From remind me, Tyler. I'm pre pretty sure you're up with like Neo. But the uh, we could throw a 3.5 in there and see if yeah. you know can't hurt. Yeah. So we're really going after the 5.7. It's the most common to have that issue. But we'll throw a 3.5 in there and see if we can't uh, help help with that. So. Tyler, get up with me. I'll let you know when we get the, the Hemi tick testing going, and we'll get you involved in that as well if you're interested. James Bruce says, how about that grease I sent in? You get some grease from James? We did. We did. Um, Are you stumped again? <laughs> Man, the first couple of questions made me sweat, and now this grease question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, James, as we said, we're, we're going to uh, have a grease project next year. Um, we should have followed up with James and given him an update of well why don't you what, update him right now <laughs> James uh, basically the testing as we come up with some formulations for Greece uh, what we will be doing is is a four ball test that's how you evaluate the performance of a Greece so what you do is you it, it's a test where you take three ball bearings half inch ball bearings the fourth ball bearing rotates in the center you analyze the wear scar after the test, and then another part of that test is at what point those balls weld together. So <clears throat> it's a test that's fairly expensive. We don't have a tester in house to do that. We, we rely on that as a, as a third party test. So we are very interested in testing the grease that you had sent in. The plan is to test that along with other competitor greases once we start that project, which, which would be at the likely the beginning of next year. I, I wasn't even aware of that. I didn't know yeah. James is sending magic grease in. Is it yeah. unicorn grease, James? Is that what this is? <laughs> <laughs> so Trey Sykes, full supply of Hot Shots oils here in North Carolina. You're right. Trey's got yeah. it all. So uh, if you're down there in North Carolina, you can find Trey. And I guarantee if he pops his trunk, there's a bunch of supplies in there. James Gould, 2015 D13. Can I use this oil also? Will the stiction eliminator help with that famous Volvo injectors ticking? Yes, it's very likely that it would. That's another, the, the Volvos are another manufacturer that's on our radar as, as being a group to test. Uh, so let's get his contact information and, and do a little test with him as well. Well, he follows up with, what oil do you recommend for the D13? We would actually make you up a, uh, a blend of using our oil with a clean-out shot of the uh, stiction eliminator. Wow. Yeah. I didn't get a custom blend. <laughs> he just poured stuff in my marshmallow. Yeah. Well, there you go. Jamie, why don't you uh, shoot us a message? Um, like we said, uh, the Volvo is something on, on, our, on our radar, so... You might just get a custom blend from Kevin himself. So she just messaged, we'll follow up with you, Jamie. Tyler says, yeah, he's up in Cleveland, send me messages. Cool, Tyler, thanks, bud. Troy Kennedy, where can I send pictures of your product lines posing with my muscle car build? Hey, we like that. Yeah. Um, where, did Levi, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, social media. If you want to message them to us through Facebook or 
info at hotshot secret whatever we'll post them um we love that type of stuff uh just tag us on it hotshotseeker.com what's instagram tag at hotshot secret <laughs> two s's yeah two s's at hotshot secret so yeah troy we'd love to see him yeah. hey, post him in a thread here I, I can look at him right now it'd be nice brent hilliard says beard grease <laughs> you do need some beard grease <laughs> So, you, so some days you need some beard oil, some days you need some beard grease. Yeah. We'll, we'll test on TJ. We'll do like half his beard with grease, half with oil. Yeah. TJ and Trey would both be good candidates. Trey would too. Trey gets a lot of compliments <laughs> yeah. on that beard. Uh, he said, nope, I hope yours. Okay. I'm going to need grease soon, so squeeze that unicorn. All right, James. <laughs> All right, so we're caught up here. Uh, let's get into Q&A time. I think we're going to be crushing some myths, right? Yes, we are. Well, that's what you're tasked to do. <laughs> Let's see if you can do it. You haven't started off too good today. <laughs> <laughs> so, some people think if you're doing regular maintenance, mm -hmm. an engine and fuel system clean out is not necessary. Is that true? It isn't true. Why not? And by, by what do we mean by an engine clean out? So, if you're staying on top of your oil changes, your air filter your tires your rotation all that stuff why do you still need to do a full clean out and what does a full clean out entail well yes and i should say some people's definition of a clean out is i know my my grandpa used to after he was getting ready to change the oil he would drain some oil out about half the oil out fill the other half with with diesel fuel run the engine what? for a little bit to clean it out he actually was a mechanic so some we don't recommend that at home <laughs> Some people's definition is to run an engine flush you know, right before they change oil. Mm -hmm. So w what we want to talk about is, hey, if you run a really good oil, if you have done engine flushes in the past, you know, what's to be gained? What's the risks involved? So, so basically the program on the oil side that we would recommend is doing a clean out, of course, with the stick eliminator. And, and the reason why is this. Uh, Everybody knows that engine performance decreases over time. You know, there's a lot of variables that, that go into that. You know, dirty air filter, um, you know, valve deposits, you know, engine wear from rings, you know, due to loss of compression. Um, all those things cause performance and fuel economy to decrease over time. Well, what we found in our testing, you know, we had taken a, a FedEx truck that, that didn't have any maintenance done, and we ran the stiction eliminator in it to see how much power could be restored by, by using the product. Uh, so what we found was you know, a 3.6% increase in fuel economy when we ran the stick eliminator. So, so what does it really do? There, there's a couple of different things. One, in, in diesels, the, uh, the film temperature in a turbo can get up to, I mean, generally it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So you have that cooking of oil in the turbo bearing. And what that does if you're, <coughs> Uh, you know, when you hit the accelerator, the time it takes for your turbo to spool up and, you know, your engine you get to get... some lag. Yeah, you get some lag, you get some loss of performance, you get, you know, your, your engine's not as optimized as well. Uh, so there's something to be gained there by restoring that. Uh, the other thing the stick eliminator does that a flush doesn't do, you know, a flush gets, gets some of the contaminants out of your engine, but what the stick eliminator does because you run with the whole oil change, it actually has a chance to free up your rings. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've done some tests. Uh, you know, Toyota has that oil consumption problem, and, and one of the friends of the company, we did a test with them with the stick eliminator before he took his engine in to, to get rebuilt. And from the, the freeing up of the rings, uh, you know, compression was restored, power was restored, and that's, that's another thing that you don't really notice over time the the loss of power, right. but once you run a product like that, it's restored, it's and, it's, and it's a dramatic result. We hear you know emails, you know notes on Facebook. If you check you know reviews on Amazon, um, you know people are amazed at the restoration of power, and so that's what a product like the Stix Eliminator does. In addition to that, it really is the only product on the market that cleans and lubricates in the same formula. At the same time, right? It's really hard to do. Uh, you know, a solvent will thin out the, the oil, <coughs> and when you thin out the oil, you've reduced your film strength, and you've increased wear. Which is why those type of 
clean and dump have to get out of the system right away. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a solvent, you're compromising the oil. Um, we actually have a, you know, we've, we've talked about it in other episodes, but a nano lubricant that, you know, in, in addition to cleaning, it also decreases the wear. Uh, you know, when we did our lab test, it was 62%. So, you know, we have a lot of data to support the merits of, of using a, a product like the Stiction Eliminator for restoring power and for preventing, you know, preventing the loss of power in the first place. So that's on the fuel side, on the or on the, on the oil, oil side. side, on the fuel side. You got mixed up when you threw fuel in your oil. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks for correcting me there. Uh, yeah, the uh, on the f on the fuel side. Again, it, it's it's the same way as far as what's lost over time is so gradual that you don't don't notice it. You know, we go to these events, we give people samples of the EDT. If it's a couple day event, they'll come back and. Oh, I love Friday samples. Yeah. Get out samples on Friday. Yeah. It's like, you're going to come be here tomorrow? Throw it in the truck tonight. Come back to the booth and talk to me. And I love when I give it to a skeptic. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. And they come back the next day and they buy. Yeah. Like, what do you sell this in? So. Yeah. Well, when injectors aren't matched, they make more noise. You know, so, so when you run an injector cleaner, you're matching all your injectors. You're letting your, uh, you know, the control, the oxygen sensors, you know, control to the proper air-fuel ratio. And optimizing the the mix. So, so to anyone that would say you don't need a you know a flush in the oil or an injector cleaner for maintenance, you know there actually is a lot to be gained. And uh, you know we've mentioned it before, but our, our money back guarantee. We don't really ask ever a question um, as to why the person needs their money back. It would just you know if you're not satisfied, we just give it back. So. That's kind of the answer to a couple of these myths. They're Plus, all myths. Busted a couple of them in a. All right, in, you're back on. You're back on target. Block there. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> next one I got for you here is: ha, Have modern engines changed the need to clean out fuel oil systems annually? For example, increased heat, pressure, smaller tolerances, etc. Hmm. Is that a good question? That is a good question. A good There's question. a lot to that. Okay. <laughs> So, so on the fuel side, you know, especially with the high pressure common rail systems of today, you know, the, the fuels presented to the injectors, the, the return fuel that, that doesn't get used is, you know, it's under a lot of pressure, it's returned really hot. When fuel is hot, it can oxidize. When it oxidizes, you have a greater chance of additives falling out of solution. Hmm. So. A product like Diesel Extreme or EDT, they both have an antioxidant in it that prevents that, um, really it's browning or you know, discoloring of the fuel, which is a, a sign that the fuel's been oxidized. oxidized right. And whenever that happens, you get plug fuel filters, huh. which, which can always be a bad day if you don't have a spare. So, okay, so how much of that fuel is getting by unused? Uh, it varies by manufacturer. I actually can't give you a percentage, but it's, it's a decent amount. It re the point is, it really gets it's really hot when it does get returned. So, what's the solution? I mean, if if we if we're burning that fuel more efficiently, mm -hmm. is that is then less getting by returning hot? The actually, if you're burning the fuel more efficiently, then you would actually be returning more fuel because you're not combusting as much. Oh. <laughs> But it's probably head of stumps. <laughs> but uh, but the, uh, the the antioxidant properties of, of a fuel additive is, is really important to prevent problems. Right. And then the injector cleaning. So even know, though it's going back hot, if it's not, we're we're, we're preventing it from oxidizing in that heat. Yes. Well, that's a great thing. Yeah. That's a wonderful product. Yeah. Everybody should put that in their diesel fuel, don't you think? Yeah, it, it's a really good prevention. Um, you know, it's it's fully formulated so it. You know, we always say that it has it has two parts: the cetane and the injector cleaner, is to give you the payback, right. and the rest of it's to protect your fuel system. Right. You know, we uh, uh, we have a water dispersant, lubricity additive, rust knock station inhibitor, and a fuel stabilizer, mm -hmm. and then the other two things. Yeah, six. Yep, yeah. got them all. Yep. So when we say they're fully formed, they really are. And honestly, I'd never heard that really before. 
So I learned something right there about the fuel, and, and, and I, I see what you're saying, because the hot fuel is going to oxidize, and if that's just one more thing that, and our EDT can do that. Yeah, they both have antioxidants in them. That's, that's interesting. So mm -hmm. there's just another reason that these crazy guys in R&D really fully think everything through. So as Chris used to say, you know, said many times, um, if we're pouring something in, let's, let's knock out every possible problem or issue that we possibly can, you know? Yeah. So, and it's just amazing what they've been able to squeeze in just like an ounce of EDT. Mm -hmm. So you know, that, that's, that's really impressive. But you know when you are using it, we've covered, you can go look at the additive aisle and there are many bottles out there that do one of the many things our EDT does. Mm -hmm. And it would, uh, we should have one of those commercials that say, it would take these bottles to do what this one thing can do, but it's yeah. the truth, you yeah. know? And so, and that's what we try to do, except for an upcoming product. Oh, yeah. Which is coming soon, right? Any, do we have an update on that? Yeah, well, what Kyle was talking about, we have a lubricity only product uh, coming out. It's just like it says, lubricity only. We're working on a name for it. We've kind of kicked around a couple of <laughs> different names. Uh, you know, basically, the claims that we can make. Oh, are, he's letting it out of the bag. <laughs> Listen to these numbers. Are, it, it, we, we've done a couple different tests to verify our results. And just to take a step back, the way in diesel fuel that you evaluate lubricity is you do an HFRR, which is a high frequency reciprocating rig test. We, we send it out for third party testing. Uh, we, we tested the, the product on untreated fuel. And then one of the top competitors that has really good claims on lubricity, we use them as a benchmark. They and claim to be number one. Yeah. They, they're, it's that company. They're, they're number one. Number one. <laughs> All and, over, number and, one. And so what we're going to offer is a lubricity additive that you only need to use half as much, but it will, re, it will have a better response on the HFRR. So are you telling me <laughs> that they're going to have more lubricity using half as much product. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we, we haven't, uh, we haven't got to the point of, of pricing it out, but I'm sure it's going to be at a, a lower price point per treated gallon because of the and it's less expensive. Version. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> How do you do this? Shout out to Aaron, Jen, yeah. Kevin. Yeah, we have a lot of help. Our R&D is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I know they worked really hard on this. And, and this is from feedback from our customers, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, Like I said, when we talk about all this fully formulated stuff, this is like the first time I can think of that we really just did a targeted single approach product like this. Because yeah. um, there's lubricity in our diesel extreme. There's lubricity in our EDT. Mm -hmm. But to, for us to put a product out like that, it's kind of outside of our normal scope. But we got a lot of feedback and we listen to you guys out there and a lot of our race teams that are running like you know high performance stuff and there's some there's some fuel out there that that a lot of people are experimenting with now and it's super dry and we're hearing injectors pop left and right and and, yeah. and people are coming to our booths at these shows knowing we know a little bit about this saying you know help with this so uh, this lubricity product is really really impressive and for these guys to be able to formulate something that can beat the number one in the industry. It's been number one for a very, very long time and proudly claimed to be the number one most lubricity product. And to do it with half as much dosage mm -hmm. at a cheaper price point. Yeah, the, the other thing when we, when we put our- Good job, R&D, <laughs> come on. The other thing when we put our tech data sheet together, you know, when we talk to customers, a lot of them are still using transmission fluid and two stroke oil right. um, to add some extra lubricity. So, this next round of testing that we're doing, we're, we're, we're testing those products to see, so you guys will understand, hey, where's this at if I do use two-stroke? Where's that when you use the lubricity-only product? So, so you be able to have an informed decision. Yeah, and it's like the, uh, a lot of guys are, I know the, we've seen the last couple of weeks at the, at the races, mm -hmm. um, a lot of guys are using some of this, you know, diesel race fuel, and they're having to spike it, like cut diesel race fuel with regular diesel pump fuel. Yeah. And we already know diesel pump fuel barely has any lubricity in yeah. it. But that tells you how much the, the race fuel is kind of, uh, um, you know, lacking as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, what can you do with it? You can cut it with diesel fuel. That's not going to give you that much lubricity. You can, you can cut it with our EDT. You can overdose it if you want with our EDT and get a lot of lubricity into that fuel. Um, but I think uh, 
We've got some good testing on the way. Shout out to Ryan Milliken. He helped us out with that. We're gonna we're gonna be doing some testing on some on some fuel as well. And uh, I think that new mix with our new Lubricity product is going to solve that problem. I guess here's a question I got for you. Okay. <laughs> You're scared now, aren't you? Starting to sweat again. Uh oh. So. I guess you know we've talked about uh, a race fuel here. We've been the diesel race fuel for a while, and yeah. I know um, we weren't going to put it out until we had it perfected. So, what is better then if if there is race fuels out there, or even regular pump fuels, and the guys at CP3, CP4s that are having this issue from having a lack of lubricity in a high performance application? Should we are we better off just putting our lubricity additive into that, or should or, or is we as a company still looking at creating a formula that is a high performance fuel that already has kind of like we say our our race oils are infused with our fr3 mm -hmm. are we going to now have a fuel that's infused with our lubricity additive it's very possible uh you know we've we've worked on the race fuel for really the last year and a half trying to add different things to it to, to push the envelope uh, we thought we had a good recipe to start with but you know you know, when you get to real world, you know, we couldn't produce the results on the dyno. So to answer your question, um, it's definitely still on the table. As a matter of fact, at UCC, uh, uh, I had a lot of people ask me, that's why I'm asking you. Yeah. P tractor pullers were asking. Um, I actually found a, uh, a company that may be a good partner to do some testing with. Hmm. Um, they make cams and, and pistons and, uh, we're going to help them on a few projects and, we talked about the racing fuel, and I think they're going to be able to help us advance the, the nice. testing program on that. So it's definitely still on the table. Uh, it's just one of those things that as we as we learn more and make improvements, you know, it's it's, uh, it's that one's kind of a slow mover. All right, so I'm going to throw another Q&A at you then. All right. We know, let's see if I've got, oh, wow, I did more than I thought. So we know modern engines are advancing was forced in part because of government regulations. So the engines are advancing. Mm -hmm. Has oil advanced as well? <laughs> At uh, the same rate that these engines are. Well, <laughs> Let me help you out. No, Kevin, they haven't. Yeah, there's, I mean, th there's two parts to that. Okay, let's go through both parts. <laughs> okay, the first part is chemistry is always advancing. Mm -hmm. There's you know, new friction modifiers, there's new materials available, you know, just like we use the nano lubricant. That is a, that's a fresh technology that's going to be adopted in mainstream mo motor oil someday, but uh, big companies are not early adopters of things like, like nanoparticles. So <clears throat> when it comes to, to oil, when specifications are made, oil manufacturers design their oil to meet those specifications. And there's, there's actually more advanced chemistry out there, and, and that's where the, the benefit of additives come in. Mm -hmm. You know, there is always a better additive. You can always enhance a motor oil with, with some of the newest additives that are out there. It's just, just because of the way the, the system works. Um, so the, to answer the question, you know, more and more, you know, with variable valve timing, uh, higher pressures, uh, lower viscosity oils being introduced into the market. Um, engine oils are asked to <coughs> to carry more. Uh, th they're abused more than they ever have. Right. Uh, and, and we know from you know, our experience with the Huey injector, sometimes it's difficult to predict, especially in new technology in an engine. You know how the oil is going to react. Right. Is, is it going to coke? Uh, you know, is it going to get through the warranty period without coking? You know, so. So the problem with new oil or new technology is the the additives are available to address the problem but a lot of times they're not formulated to to adequately uh do I shouldn't say that they're 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 not over formulated they're just formulated just enough and then sometimes there's problems sometimes there's not problems I guess that's the best way to explain it I like it I think it works I'll accept it. Pretty close to the end. Let's check up on questions. I know we've had 
Let's see, Sean Tripoli says, I want a product that can clean emission systems filter sensors. Well, yeah. we can't really clean a DPF, but we can we can prevent it from yeah. getting dirty. Um, we've cut emissions down. We've got testing on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's companies out there that have systems that basically pump foam through your EGR and your system to to physically clean it out. Um, there's really no products on the market to, to, to you know no additive you can put in the fuel to to clean it out. But like Kyle said. The, the soot is is really unburned fuel. So, mm -hmm. so when we did some testing, a truck without EDT versus a truck with EDT, at idle we had 50% less soot in the combustion gas. 50%. 50%. That's half as much. Yeah. Just to clarify, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. Yeah. It, it was just another benefit of this EDT. Yeah. Shouldn't it be called like a 14 in one at this point? It's a lot of great benefits from it. it we is. don't even advertise all of them. So, the beater max is holy grab 400 degrees. I think he's referring back to uh, when he said where the burns at. David Center says that was a practice a lot of old timers did to clean engines before modern detergent oils. My grandfather flushed out his Oldsmobiles with kerosene before adding new oil. Kind of hmm. like uh, you were throwing in uh, diesel fuel, where your grandpa was. Tyler says, going to fill my crankcase with diesel to fix my ticking. <laughs> Again, do not try this at home. We do not advise that. Uh, Evan Tracy says, any chance you guys can make a 75W140 gear oil? Well, we do have a 140 gear oil. Mm. It's not a 75. I think it's an 85. Mm. But, okay. Like we talk about motor oil, that winter weight is not really a vital weight unless you're in a climate that is really that cold mm -hmm. if you're if, if you're in if we just had Derek Klein in here one of our sponsored racers um, he moved down to Florida you know and I think he was on a, a 540 and I just moved him up to a 1540 or something like that but he's that's not gonna matter if he's at a 540 or 1540 he's in Florida he's never gonna get to 5 or 15 degrees mm -hmm. like we're not he didn't have to worry about that so he, the motor oil is never gonna see that winter weight is that the same for gear oil it is it is it is and so to, and to answer your question it's not likely we would we would offer an 85 anytime in the near future an 85 or I'm sorry 75 I wrote right okay I wrote 75 we have 85 so we have an 85-140, Evan. Yeah. Um, Evan, let us know specifically why you're asking for a 75 or if you'd be opposed to running an 85-140. Um, I don't see that being a, a, a problem. Bearded says, I used Sticks Eliminator about a year ago, unknown how many miles ago. Would it hurt to do another dose? I'm 1,000 away from oil change now. Well, it's never going to hurt. Um, you can do it every week if you want and just pay us a lot of money for no reason if you want to waste your money is the question are you due for another dose you don't know how many miles just because it's a year I wouldn't say that that's a reason to do it if you're on the same oil interval as, as you were you haven't changed the oil so technically that sticks and is still in the motor bearded medic then no, this is four oil changes four oil changes since well yeah that's probably time for another another maintenance dose yeah, and you won't want to put it in now. Is if you have a thousand to go to your next oil change, just just wait till then. Just wait till your next oil change. That way you get the full. Are you running FR three and those other three oil changes? Because that's really what we recommend: doing a full clean out of sticks and eliminator on the first oil change. You can follow your next two oil changes with FR three in those mm -hmm. to help cl keep it clean. When you go back to stiction on that third or fourth oil change, you just need half the dosage. You need a, just a just a maintenance dosage. So, uh, hope that helps you out there, uh, bearded. Uh, Troy Kennedy says, picture sent to Facebook page of car build. Thanks. Yeah. So Levi will find that and get that posted. David Baker's watching. How you doing, David? I see Chris Tudor out there. Patrick Ryan Coffee, thoughts on using TSE. It's a 95 7.3 power stroke with E40D. 430,000 miles. Well done. Unknown tranny work. So, that many miles, it's a 7.3 power stroke. I guess I, I, I can probably see where his question's coming. Like I've heard before, when you've got a transmission fluid in it for a while, if you haven't changed it, like if you're somebody that forgets to change your transmission fluid, yeah. a mechanic will tell you, don't, don't change it. it. Yeah. Just ride it out. <laughs> 
And I've heard the science behind that reason before, and it does make sense, but so what do you say? If he doesn't know any previous tra training work before that, he's at 430,000 miles, mm -hmm. maybe not flushing the training out, but would it hurt to, to dose it with TSE? Yeah, I don't think I don't think it would hurt to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it actually would be a good idea. Uh, but you're it, telling them not to dump it. Don't don't dump it. Yeah. Just drain a quart out, and add a quart of, of TSE. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, and again, what the time. TSE does, it it doesn't it doesn't have any additives in it. It just has uh, an ester that's really polar, so it's gonna. It's going to pull the additives uh, that have played it out on, in spots in the valve body and, and improve shift quality. So as far as, you know, I'd worry about dumping the transmission fluid, but adding the transmission stiction eliminator, um, I think that would just provide a benefit and maybe for, prevent shifting issues in the future. Uh, one more here and we got to run. Uh, Troy Kennedy says... Has anyone started looking at the lubricating and cooling lubricants for the electric cars like Tesla? Interesting question. Uh, we try to look towards the future here, and let's be frank, we're a lubricant company, you know, dealing <laughs> yeah. with, with gas, fuel, and oil additives. Electric cars kind of scare us, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, so, you know, like they said, the old stage coaches turned into like making handbags, you know, like yeah. yeah. That's where the coach comes from if you didn't know. I didn't but, know that. Yeah, now you know. Huh? So they used to make the leather and the stage coaches. Yeah. yeah so the cars came around and yeah, you got it. <laughs> so the, the the question is a good question. And my initial take on it, when we've had some talks about here about let's think outside the box, let's think future, what kind of products would we coming out in the market? Well as electric comes more and more into the market, I'm thinking well, they got to have some incredible grease bearings in there to keep those wheels rolling to reduce friction because it's only having electric power. The more, but I remember Chris telling me, nope, there's not a drop of oil in an electric car. Hmm. Is that just gonna hmm out of there? <laughs> I know Chris told me that. Yeah, that's what he said. So is that the case? I honestly don't know. I, we don't. You stumped him again. <laughs> That's the third time. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done, Troy. I think Troy was the first one to stuff you. He's going to be the last one to stump you. Yeah. Uh, okay. so, so we don't really know. I mean, I will say this much. If there is any lubricant in a vehicle, we'll, we'll develop something for it. Mm -hmm. If this world gets wiped of all gas and diesel vehicles and we're stuck with electric, if there's a drop of grease or oil or something in there, we'll find something for it. Mm -hmm. And as that market picks up, um, we'll see. But I will say, I remember Chris telling us once that no, there isn't even grease or bearings or anything in, in, in those. So um, that's our answer that we got to stick with for now, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Patrick Covers says, thanks, guys. So uh, how about wraps us up? We got through some of our stump, stump the tribologist. This is a rough day. <laughs> <laughs> this, that was the whole goal, though. That's, that's what we like here. Thanks for the tough questions. Uh, we like it. Uh, uh, I like playing stump, stump the tribologist. We should do it more often. <laughs> Uh, so reminder, uh, end of the month, May 31st, June 1st, is the Firepunk Diesel Revenge Outlaw Diesel Super Series. Saturday night is sponsored by Hotshot Secret here in Ohio. For all of our friends out there that we all meet once a month somewhere around the country at some racetrack, we're really excited to have you guys into Ohio. So I hope you're making plans to come out here. We welcome you. We look forward to having you here. It's going to be an awesome event. So save the date for that. Um, again, we're really excited to have the Hot Shots BMW, now in-house. Big thanks to Trey Sykes. Yeah, thank um, such a good ambassador of our company, mm -hmm. ambassador of our brand. Yeah. And he has become a little tribologist himself. Yeah. I mean, wow, does he... Yeah, did he, he, he has some really good questions. He has some really see. good questions. And I will say, Trey, in just this one week, has challenged R&D with more stuff than they can think about. And there's only so many hours in the day, but... If, if Trey had his way, we'd have about 48 new products this week because he's got some really good ideas that R&D has on the list. We're going to look into it. And um, a lot of them are racing related. So the, your racers that come from his perspective, uh, there might be some unique products coming out your way. Um, as well as, you know, like he's got a real tie into this BMW Volkswagen community. Yeah. I had a good talk today with another guy we just talked about. So I think we have some stuff coming for... Our, our BMW, Volkswagen, Audi fans out there. I know we got a pretty good following of you guys. Stay tuned. We got some really cool stuff coming soon. Levi himself. So uh, we're excited to see some progress on that. Uh, 
uh, you know, thanks to all our dealers that give us that type of feedback that allows us to kind of make these products. Excited to give you the specs on the Lubricity product that's coming soon. What are we, two weeks away on that too? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, two weeks. Everything's two weeks <laughs> away, so two weeks can be a big time. Uh, so thanks again. Uh, any, uh, oh, let's, uh, some giveaways. So what do you, what do you decide? Stiction, diesel extreme? Uh, 32 D diesel extreme or, or an oil, oil kit. Now. So here's our winners. How about uh, Troy Kennedy? You definitely get something. Jamie Gold. Tyler Camfield and Patrick Coffey. Troy, Jamie, Tyler, and Patrick, send us a private message on Facebook with your uh, address where we can ship you. Let us know if you want a bottle of Diesel Extreme or if you want an oil analysis kit. Uh, they will be on the house uh, and we'll, we'll get that shipped out to you. For those of you that, that win something, like I always say, come back on another Friday, post up, tell us how you liked, what you liked about the product. For those that choose to get an oil sample kit, if you let us, we'll, we'll read your oil sample analysis, you know, on a, on a Friday Live, and we'll maybe educate people on how that, that goes down and, yeah, and, and, and show them what that's like. So remember to subscribe to our email newsletter, get exclusive deals and updates, like and follow our Facebook page, check out our digital magazine. Also, our magazine Digital is now out. We have the new web deal, double your points for the next couple of weeks here, so stack your points up and, and, and get your product while you can. Anything else, Kev? I think that covers it. Thanks for stumping the tribologist this week. It was fun. We'll do it again. And uh, until next Friday, everybody have a good weekend. We'll see yep. you next week. See you next week.